after a lot of 4th of July for the JBL Cup Series, which saw Fantastic Racing a crash and a couple of, of instances that should have been a crash but weren't. And oh yeah, three miles at the end, we, which saw Bradley Moon get his first win on the season for Team Penske. We head up north to Chicago Land Speedway, with the points being as tight as it's been all season with the top 10 drivers separated by only 12 points. And we had to quite possibly the most chaotic mile half on the schedule is the McDonald's 400 race 2 of the chase for the season 5 JBL Cup Series. What's up everyone, it's the boy on the Racing 97 aka Nathan Zaken here and welcome back here for the second night in the row at Chicago Land Speedway last uh, uh, yesterday it was the, the Power Jet Series which saw a fantastic late race battle and now here on a Wednesday night for the the JBL Cup Series, a transition race from the day to the night. We will see if he will get the job done for chase race number two. I'm not alone for this one. Once again, I'm joined by a uh, team of Team Penske, which won last week at Indianapolis, is Bronson Minnick. Welcome back to, to Chicago Land for the second night in a row. Thank you for having me, Nathan. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chicago Land for the racers and drivers, fans and team owners that participated last night for the Truck Series race. You thought that was chaotic? Wait till you see the points battle that we have, the drivers that we have in the field, and of course, how could we forget the track that we're racing at, Chicago. Easily the most chaotic mile and a half that we go to, Nathan, and it is going to be a very chaotic one. Race 17, or race 18, rather, here at Chicagoland. Crazy, that is already race 18 of the season. After tonight, only eight races remain in the season and it's getting down to crunch time. Of course, last week at the Brickyard, we saw a whole lot of, of changes in the point standings, but one of them was not significant, but it was at the same time. Joe Wachowski was not able to make it on field by one lap, uh, two laps, and all of his 15, 20 point advantage that he had over the field is gone. He's still second in the points, only two points behind Clifton, but now all of a sudden, like I said at the top of the show, 10 drivers are only separated by 12 points now, so that opens up an entire can of ones, and with that, Boston, what do you think we will see for these 36 cup drivers for 67 laps here tonight? 67 laps, That's just, that to the drivers, that just means 67 more chances to either improve their season or wreck their season or wreck it for everybody else, Nathan. But I, I think that that means that the drivers are going to try their hardest to try their best, race the best they can, because they know they have eight races to go here in the season. It's a long way to go, and you don't want to be wasting it on one race. Rakowski got lucky with him having such a consistent regular season, and he starts second in, in line. That's outside pole sitting that he sits on that's uh, outside pole so with that all gone with his advantage that he gained during the incredible regular season now he's pretty much level pegging with the rest of the field and i think everybody's going to take notice of that and try not to wreck their stuff it's a chaotic race but you obviously don't want to risk it all for one race oh yeah without a doubt we've seen it before just take that at the wall cup series last year on alex's channel do web Dominic Dwyer all season long, but once he got to the chase, he had so many pro uh, problems that he only won the championship by two points. We could be in that same scenario this season with Joe Wachowski be the Dominic Dwyer, but we'll have to see what happens here tonight. For race number 18 on the season, it is a pair of chases on the front row, and it's out San Vitale on the pole here tonight. And alongside him is jo uh, Joe Wachowski in that number 43. Row number 2 is the McDonald's car in the M M McDonald's corner, Travis Crampton. Who honestly, if we go back to Pocono in Indianapolis, he should have had two wins uh, uh, in the last two races. Don McDonald's in both wants to do a little, be a little bit better here tonight starting in third. And then Noah Clifton, the point leader, by two points over the rest of the field. Starts fourth. Juan Garcia and Eli Blight. Bright minus 37 after a terrible week last week at Indianapolis. He needs a good a good one t here tonight. Well, number four is Eric Marco and Anthony Hernandez who got involved in the only caution last night in the Twitch series race. And when I have out the top ten is Brandon Beal 
in Carlos Sustra, who I want to left her name for her name is, uh, in that short race, and they are right, uh, nose to tail inside the top 10. The rest of the chases look like this. Trey Bell starts 14th, Dale Campbell starts 15th, Josh Ramson starts 16th, Juan Garcia starts 17th, and then Matthew Burnett starts 24th, and then unfortunately, Logan Williams starts 33rd, and Nick Lopez starts 35th here tonight. So for um, a couple of those chases, they are going to have a rough night in the back, but we saw Eli Bright, he started 29th in the truck race and worked himself up into ninth at the end of the race, so maybe Logan Williams can do that here tonight, or maybe Nett Lopez in the number 54. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get these 36 straws underway here at Chicago Lane Speedway for the 18th time of season number 5. It will be Alex Amitale and Joe Wachowski, two chases on the front row, and Bronson, the team of the team owner of Team Penske, he won last week with uh, Bradley Ream at Indianapolis on 4th of July. Who do you think will win here under the lights at Chicago Land Speedway? Well, I'm just noticing the race title of the race here at Chicago Land, and it has nothing to do with my decision, but he could have won at Pocono. He lost. He could have won at Indianapolis. He lost again. So I think that he's going to become the next non-chaser to win in the chase, and it's going to be the man right there, the 45 of Travis Crampton, driving the McDonald's car in the McDonald's 400. Again, no correlation whatsoever with my decision, but that is my choice, and I think he's going to get it done. But before he can win it, he has to get through the wrecks, get through the action, and maybe even two pit stops before this thing is all said and done, and he can cruise to victory. That is my pick, Travis Crampton right there, but... Of all the things listed, he has to get through that. Well, Crampton could have won the last two. Maybe the time would be the charm here tonight. It would be out San Vitale and Joe Wachowski on the front row. And we have green flag racing for the McDonald's 400 at Chicago Land Speedway. Three and four wide in the middle of the field, but we're going to keep it straight for now. We're going to cross the line for that number one with Sam Tolly out front. They are four wide in the middle of the field, though, with Hamill and Bardo and last week's winner, Bradley Ream. And there's some chasers in the middle. That's the seven there of Ace Garcia there, and that is the 41. And Derek Hamill is there as well, but that's Trey Bardo still on the inside. They get it straightened back out to three wide. We have another four wide battle. The three, the four, and that's the 99 there. He've dropped like a rock there, but meanwhile, Savitali leads lap number one here at Chicago, or lap number two rather, here at Chicagoland. Insane battles already. Three wide, two wide battles everywhere Nathan this is more insane than the truck race I feel like yeah these cup dogs are not messing around here tonight at Chicago Land but you know who's not messing around is Joe Wachowski these two ironically enough battle for the race win always on at Indianapolis until a late race fuel drama took into effect but Wachowski to the inside of the Crampton and the, what we saw yesterday in the uh, oh my goodness Eli boy almost into Crampton what we saw yesterday in the truck race was it was a lot easier to pass um, than expected. The inside lane worked out to perfection. Have to see what ends up happening here tonight. This track is multi group There's two, maybe three different lanes. And have to see if what lane will work out perfect at the start. And what lane ends up working out at the end. Crampton is losing a handful of spots though. Right now we got a caution on lap number five. And it's... Oh no. Nick Lopez. Early on, lap number five, spin crash in the trioval. Caution is out, but they're racing back, going into turn number three. And it looks like it's going to be San Vitale leading by a good margin between... Oh my gosh, it's both legacy cars again, Nathan. <laughs> San Vitale leads. Rakowski and Bright. That is Garcia there, the Penske car. Crampton. And that's the 31, I believe, of Jordan Edwards, the 4 of Brandon Beal. You never want to count him out, but we are under caution for the very first time on lap number 6. Well, last night in the truck race, it didn't take too long to uh, 
have a caution is why am I on lap 21? Uh, don't like doing pit stops, but look one of the only one of the pit stops here and this is interesting, it's around 28 to 30 laps on fuel, give or take. And it looks like we're going to see pit stops here on lap number 6 coming to lap 7. They probably will have to pit a second time still here in this one, so they probably will have to pit again. It looks like everybody is going to be on to pit road here. Looks like they stacked it up there. There's the 8 car. That is Aaron Abel, last night's winner from the Truck Series. He's going to look to go back-to-back -back here in the Truck and Cup, doing double duty. But meanwhile, on pit road further down, going into turn one almost, it is Sam Vitale stepping into his pit box with Rakowski really close behind. And Bardo only took oh, two tires, I oh. believe. That's a gamble. Him and Hamill. Bardo and Hamill only took two tires, maybe a splash of fuel at the most. There's Bright out of the pits. There's Sam Vitale Oh, Wachowski. A slow stop. Clamped him with a slow stop. And no, Clifton him with a slow stop. All three of those guys have terrible pit stops here. Those are heavy hitters right there. Clifton and Rakowski. And Wachowski is still on pit road. Wow. Oh, my goodness, Nathan. From third uh, you know, to second to outside the top 20 at least. I, I, I did not see that coming, Nathan. That was... Wow. Well, not sure what happened with the 4 3 right there, but Crampton with a slow stop, Clifton with a slow stop, and not nearly as bad as Wachowski, a terrible stop of the 4 3 And meanwhile, up one, it was Trey Bardo and Dale, uh, Dale Hamill with a two-tire gamble. Have to see if how that works out for him. Let's go ahead and... Uh, let's go ahead and see what about the first caution of the night here at Chicago Land Speedway for Season 5 of the JBL Cup Series. Well, here we go, this is what about the first caution here tonight at Chicago Land, and I don't think some team are going to be happy with this one. Um, White Walker just turns the chase driver of Nick Lopez, and we kind of saw this last night in the truck race um, as well. And the 54 just set up the race track. And nowhere to go for uh, for Saint to Messi, but honestly not too much damage. But the twenty of Scarlet Taylor gets a little bit of damage in that one, probably the most uh, from that one, other than the fifty four. And unfortunately, a crash caused by the the number seventy uh, eight and ends up turning one of the chases uh, drive uh, chase drivers night upside down. Tough one. A tough break there for Nick Lopez. Going into turn four, he sees all of the chaos ahead of him. Nick Lopez does. Wyatt Walker, for some reason, comes up, then comes down, as well as Nick Lopez does, but just very odd circumstance. I don't know why you would want to turn somebody on lap four of a 67-lap race, Nathan. It's just uh, it's not very uh, not a very smart move now, is it? Yeah, I'm not really sure why White Walker did that, especially to a chase drive of Nick Lopez who needs a good one. But it is what it is. Hopefully he can rebound somewhat here tonight. But with some interesting pit strategy, it will be Trey Barlow as the race leader who took two tires here, along with Dale Camel. Let's go to the restart of what will probably be a crazy one here early on at Chicago Land Speedway. Welcome back to Chicago Land Welcome back to Chicago Land Speedway. We will go back away on lap number 10 of 67. And a quick caution here in the McDonald's 400. And we have a little bit of strategy. Hamill and Ball, the top two chasers, took two tires. Everyone else, as far as we know, took four tires here. And Nick Lopez, who was involved in the only crash of the night, you guys obviously saw what happened. We don't know what happened quite yet, but I assume... It might have just been a single card spin, and that unfortunately gave the 54 of Nick Lopez damage and it had no bat bumper. Top 10 on the restart will be Trey Bell, Dale Campbell, Alex Sanvitale, uh, Eli Bright, Jordan Edwards, Brian Beal, the 38 of Justin Seidel, the number 2 of Juan Garcia, the number 3 of Eric Margo, and the number 10 of Donnie Farrington, and then Joe Lutkowski, Travis Crampton and Angel Clifton all with 
bad pit stops, Wachowski's going to restart in 24th position. Right, uh, right at behind Stout, rather, but 10 laps down. What will the next 10 produce? I guess we'll see. Green flag is back out. Bardo with a good jump, but Hamill with a better jump. He's trying to go around the outside. Bardo shuts the door, and San Vitale on fresher four tires. Crucial that everybody behind Hamill is pretty much on four tires. It is just these two cats that stayed out. Well, didn't stay out. They gambled. They took two on pit road, maybe a splash of fuel, and they're out in front. Bardo trying to defend his ground, but here comes Hamill down the inside. Oh, that 47 oh. sticks, and, and there's a 6 in the, in the in the wall right there, and the 6 almost came down into the 43 of Rakowski, and there's a big stack up down the front stretch. We got Carlos Sky down the front stretch, but we oh, are boy. we are good. We are good in the middle, gonna merge back up the way stretch on the weapon to wait for Hernandez right there, as we miss the pass for the lead, they'll handle the C-5 champion to the lead. How about Jordan Edwards to the inside of the 31, trying to take second away from that San Vitale. And what a crazy start already here at Chicago Land. Crazy start already. Ardo falling back quite a bit. And a big move for Edwards in Hoo -hoo. Uh, Edwards rather in the 31 to the inside of the 12 and to the inside of the 47. Big moves. Big, big moves here at Chicago Land going into the uh, turn three and so you have is trying to get to the inside of his own teammate right there That is Juan Garcia that is Penske lined up there on the inside behind Edwards And they're gonna try and find a way around this 31 and 47 combo But meanwhile that is Brandon Beal lurking behind but to his outside is also Eli Bright Rokowski's uh, partner in crime there with his regular season dominance, but the two is to the inside of the 12 there of San Vitali That is Garcia with Beal behind him the three of Eric Monaco, who has not really shown up all that much this season. He has finally shown up, and he is within the top five, and he's going to try and make a move here going into turn one. Main moves. How about Weem Twy making it three wide on the inside lane? This inside lane is definitely working out more than I thought. It. I will point out, it was a cool day here at Chicago, man. Only in the 60s, now it's in the 80s and low 80s here for the cup race, so it did warm up, and that's going to... Be interesting how that's going to shake up. Monaco trying that second lane to get past Brian Beal for fourth. And looks like it might work out for him. I have to watch out here in one and two if, if Beal can fight back on the inside. Looks like he's going to be able to and he's going to keep that fourth spot away. And the lights have already came on here at Chicago Land Speedway. This will be a day to night race here for these guys. And uh, going to have to see how that plays out. Going to have to see how the race lead plays out. Edwards washed up a little bit too high. San Vitale almost got to the corner panel, not quite for the way sleep three wide between uh, Monaco, Weem, and Josh Williamson who started towards the middle of the field. Got to us all over the place, and this is only six laps after the Wee start. Oh, and the 38 there, he's gonna try and make a move. That is Justin Seidel trying to make a four wide move for a second. Not quite, maybe a three wide, but with help from the two, San Vitale to the inside of Edwards. Going in a turn four down the back, or down the front stretch rather. And they are side by side coming back to the line. It's gonna be Edwards, but for how long? How much, how much longer rather? And now. San Vitali's partner, Garcia's to the outside, Brandon Beal, another forward though, he is to the inside, Edwards washes up the track, and San Vitali clears for the lead down the back stretch of Chicago, but watch out for Eli Bright behind, he's gonna try and make quick work of Brandon Beal, shoving him up, three wide, almost into the two, and here comes oh, Edwards, trying to make out. that car stick, here he comes, a crossover to the front stretch, not quite enough to lead that lap, but he's surely going to get him into turn one and down the back stretch. Amazing moves by Edwards onto the 12 there of San Vitale. And man, this battle is only getting warmed up because here comes Beal and Bright and maybe even Williamson. Throw him in here for the heck of it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is why we love this race track. Sure, it's chaotic, but when we get a little bit split out and stuff like this, we can see fantastic racing. And this is why this track is in the chase for the cup series and the choice series not because of the chaos but because of the racing the multi group racing and here we go again these two are not done San Vitale to the inside of Edwards and San Vitale and Edwards both of these drivers won the first wins on the season and they are looking for it here tonight San Vitale to the lead but look at the story one trying that second lane might have a one 
but Beal gonna go to the outside. Here comes Scott Sears to the inside of Beal. Six cards under a blanket at Chicago Lane on lap number 20. Williamson might make it through wide in the 77. Gotta think better of it. That's gonna bring in Bradley Ween. All three Team, uh, team Penske cards in the top seven. And we could have a Team Penske dominance, but what a race up front here at the moment at Chicago Lane Speedway. Oh! And Garcia to the rescue, but he's gonna put Savatoli three wide almost! Garcia had to back out. He wasn't going to make the corner or else he'd make contact with the 12th. He keeps going, but he's going to fall back, hold this whole inside lineup. But Garcia tries to make a move, a gamble, but it did not pay off in the end. Still, San Vitale leads with Brandon Beal behind and Edwards on the outside. And it's bright there behind Edwards trying to make that outside line work with now Bradley Ream, last race winner, trying to make it work as well. But Garcia, he's trying to come back. Here comes Brandon Beal. He's going to take a look to the inside, and he's there. Three wide for the lead. Edwards almost up into the wall. Edwards clears, and now Sam Vitale is stuck up on the outside with Bright behind him. But now that opens the door to Brandon Beal. Here comes Garcia to the outside. No, he thinks better of that. He's going to go back to the bottom of the, the corner. San Vitale is going to fall way back, all the way back to Williamson. And Garcia, Briel, they're going to battle it out to try and get back up to Edwards. And Edwards is loving this side-by-side -side battle. But all this battling happening going on as now we see Eli Bright getting into the mix of this. He's going to shove <laughs> these three cars up the track, almost up into the wall. But... While San Vitale and Edwards were battling, this brought a ton of cars. Reem, uh, Monaco, uh, Zydell, Williamson, they, that all brought them in. And now here comes BB Ruiz in the five. They're all coming back up here because the battle, the side-by-side -side battle, that's all bringing them back here. Nathan. Oh my goodness, we are seeing some fantastic racing at Chicago Lane here tonight. I three or three live for second between Williamson, Boy, and Juan Garcia, that inside lane is going to get tougher and tougher to make it stick here on the long one. It's about a second to second half of tire fall off, but look at Blake running that second lane. He's going to take second away, but look at Winston on his inside lane, trying to challenge him for that second position. Meanwhile, look at Jordan Edwards and Carl Racing, Sim Clone, and that team has had a off season, and uh, Miller was strong early in the season. And meanwhile, the story one is slowly but surely getting better and better as the season has gone on. Jordan Anderson in the second season. Uh, of course, last year, he, he, I believe, drove the number 12. Um, I want to up for Team Penske when we didn't have Wayne, so, uh, doing a, a good job in the story one here tonight. And, uh, maybe he can get his first career win here tonight, I believe, in, in the Cup Series. But if he wants to do that, he's going to hold off these chases. Eli Boyd, Josh Williamson, bring up Beal. At San Vitale, the four chases inside the top ten. And we are already almost halfway through uh, this one here at Chicago. Land Williamson to the inside, Bright for second. Man, that was a crazy dive bomb with Williamson on Bright. And now Bright's going to fall back with Garcia giving the run with help from Brandon Beal behind. And all that single file brought Edwards back to this main pack. All that side-by-side -side battle that we're now probably going to see, that's going to just make Edwards catapult further and further and further up the head, or uh, up the, the field, rather. And now we have another side-by-side -side battle. That is Brandon Beal stuck up at the outside. And that is Justin Zydell on the inside, Brandon Beal on the outside. And now we have Alex Vitali getting into this battle, trying to get around them to help teammate Juan Garcia, but now we see Josh Williamson getting into the battle. He has finally caught Jordan Edwards, and the 77 is going to get to the inside. He's going to make the car stick side by side off a of turn four and down the back stretch. Who's going to lead this lap? It's tight, Ooh. and I think it's going to be the 31 of Jordan Edwards, and indeed it was by a very slim margin, Nathan. But uh, down the back, or going into the back stretch, it's going to be the 77 clearing Edwards back to P2 for the first time in quite some time. And now it is Spire leading here at Chicagoland. Don't think fast, though, because here comes the 42 of Bright. You do not want to count Eli Bright out here. They're going to go side by side again. Is Eli Bright going to have the run to make it three wide? No, he backs out. Edwards back around the outside. A big head of steam off at turn number four. Big move being made. Garcia to the inside. Try to take a look to the inside of Bright. And they're all going to go single file. But Edwards, what an amazing move off of four to get around the 77 of Williamson. And he's going to continue his lead. I thought that was it for him. Yeah, that inside lane, definitely not as good later on in this one than what it was at the start. And that outside lane just propelled that 31 of Jordan Edwards to the race lead again. Williamson, he should have two wins this season. 
but he doesn't. He still won this for Spider Man Sports. They had a bad, bad indie last week and uh, trying to get a, a rebound. And this might be a good way to rebound for Williamson to get Sports win on the season to the inside up to number 31 of John Edwards. Edwards has been good on its outside lane and 3 and 4 so far. Still side by side. Seems like 3 and 4 outside lane is better than 1 and 2. It's more even between the two lanes. Remission to the inside, still side by side. And he's gonna get a new race leader, Josh Williamson, as Eli Bryce gonna slide up the racetrack a little bit. Almost into the 31. 31's gonna get a little bit of a 1, but not enough. Gonna have to fight on for second between the 42 and the 31. Man, Nathan, this is incredible racing. Now we have two chasers in the top two. Uh, maybe for a split second there. But Eli Bright and Josh Williamson, two chasers that need a good run. Williamson is in P9 going into this race here at Chicagoland. And Eli Bright dead last in the chase standings. But he is looking to turn that around with a great performance so far. But we still have another round of pit stops, I believe. And that may shake things up. At least for the for how this race may finish. Zydell to the inside trying to take a look. We see the 22 and the 12 there. They're trying to form something. But up here. Oh, the 12 is trying to take a look to the inside of the 22 there. That might be problem some uh, because the 5 there, BB Ruiz, he's there. He's trying to take a look. Monaco and that's another car behind there. That is... Ryan DeWine in that, the 14. Ryan Durrani, he's come out of nowhere. The 14. SHR so now we would have two SHR cars within the top with that top 11 something like that but yeah top 11 good, good battles we had great battles so far earlier in this race but now it's kind of calmed down side by side here between Edwards and Bright they're gonna go side by side Bright's gonna take the outside to his advantage the inside not working as well as it did Garcia's gonna have a Big head of steam going down the backstretch. He's not going to take a look to, to the inside. Unless he is, he's just saving his momentum. He's going to shove oh. <laughs> the 31 up the track all over the back bumper, Nathan. And that could have been big for Edwards there. But Garcia showed mercy, and he did not make that move. Right. Still out in front here. Edwards to the inside of Beal. And Garcia, just like that, he fell, he fell back quite a lot. And it just seems like that Josh Williamson in the 77, he's going to, with all the side-by-side -side battle, it seems, he's just going to keep going further and further and further up the head until, uh, uh, further up the field, rather. Second time I've said that, but it just seems like that he's going to get just a big head of steam with all of the side-by-side -side battles. But now it seems like that they're going to calm down here for single-file battles, Nathan. Very interesting stuff here at Chicagoland. I wonder if they're preparing for the next round of pit stops. Here's that we have some technical difficulties with Nathan Stapleton here, but I will try my best to do play-by-play -play full time. So Eli Bright to second, and now Beal is all over the back bumper, the 31. He's trying to make a move there to the inside, but he's not going to take it. N not anymore. And... He is just going to wait his turn, and he's going to try and build up a run going into turn three, maybe. Maybe it's going to pay off. No, they're still going to stay uh, single file. And Oh, and now we have pit stops beginning. That is Edwards and Garcia and Zydell and San Vitali all in. Four cars so far jumping down to the pit stops. And like I said, Nathan, that is the beginning of the pit stop. I knew something was up when they were going single file. 19 of Ronald Kennington Jr. already in the pit stops. He's making early stops. That's the one of Owen Miles. And that's Hamill. He took two. He came in. I think that's also Bart. No, that's the six there of Anthony Hernandez. But interesting stuff playing out. Hamill took two tires. They did not pay off. We saw within five laps he dropped like a rock, Nathan. But now two Penske cars in line in the top ten. And now we have more coming in as we see at the very beginning. Turn four on pit road. That is Williamson leading them on. And now we have a bunch of cars on. Not all of the field, but a bunch. We have Burnett. We have the 17 of Williamson. And that is the second in points as of going into this race. That's Zachary Fitzwater. That is Joseph Rakowski. Second in points going into this race. He's passing Williamson. He's passing Ream. Passing Beal. Passing Monaco. Passing Bright, his teammate. Passing Crampton to pit stall number one. And we will see how this all plays out, Nathan. 
we are back. Uh, I had a little bit of difficulty, but uh, luckily, Metal Pit Stars were able to fix it real quick. Joe Wilkowski off of Pit Road, and that's the 54 of damage. And how about Spire? It might be a Spire 1 2 when uh, the cycle's out. And right now, it's looking really good. Sus Dry on Pit Road stay out the longest. And I think. We shouldn't have to worry about pit stops. I think they put it right when the window opened. And with it being 29 to 31 laps, we should be good for me. But they're going to be one of the entire green, uh, uh, field one here. With 28 laps to go at Chicago Land Speedway. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting how this plays out. Is that the 24 there? Kyle Sush dry exiting pit road. That's BB Rue as his teammate. All the way stuck up on that outside. But Bright and Beal side by side. And that is Williamson. So much battling going on, Nathan. That's the 22 of Williams or uh, of Reem rather. He's to the inside. He's trying to follow uh, Beal's line. Beal's going to try and break the draft between himself and Bright. Reem to the inside of Eli Bright, and that's going to prove very costly to Eli Bright. I don't know if they made a mistake on pit road, if they were just a little bit slower, but it seems like the 22 here very quickly since the pit road exchange. Oh, that car is coming to life, and we have a caution is out. Caution is out here at Chicago Land just after the pit cycle again. Oh no! And that is the 24 of Sustry. We were just talking about Sustry doing the overcut, and that's gonna be the second caution of the night. A lot of skimmers in turn one and two. Gotta make sure he's not sitting up there. I think he's going. Yep. Uh, that is the second caution, Nathan. After the pit cycle, we saw a very similar thing happen in the truck series last night, and. That's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Are we going to see people come back down pit road to top off? Or are we going to see some varying strategies? Mm -mm, this is going to be interesting. H. Garcia is one lap down. Hernandez is also one lap down. They're good on fuel, but I think they might want to top off. No, they are not. Looks like that's not going to be the case. No one's going to come back down. Unless maybe a couple of cars in the back. Sean Anders is going to pit in the number 34. And that looks to be the only one. Even the 24 is not going to pit of Sestry. So, have to be... Uh, it's it's going to be interesting on the restart. But uh, let's go ahead and see what happened for the second caution of the night. Here in, in the McDonald's corner at Chicago Land Speedway. Well, here we go. Second caution of the night after pit stops. And this one's on Fitzy. He Barely clipped the corner panel of John Anders, who got into the side of the 10, and the 10 clipped the number 24 of Sustry, who we were just talking about doing a overcut strategy, and it would have been interesting to see how that would play out, but unfortunately that's not going to play out for him here. Hard into that side wall a couple times, and the tough weight for John Anders, Kyle Sustry, and Donnie Farrington in this one. That one, uh... Happened right in front of Nick Lopez, Dylan Matthews, and we're going to see the 43 of Joe Wachowski right there as well with a uh, record points right there. And luckily, no chase drivers involved in this one, but a tough one from Sustry who was trying a different strategy. Well, that strategy's not going to work out here tonight. After the pit cycle, Sustry comes ahead of this big pack. Santi Messi just gets ahead of it, and Fitzy, for whatever the reason, bump traps on the front stretch, a curved front stretch, and turns everybody and their brother into the wall, including what was going to be a very interesting strategy call, Kyler Sustry, and spins him into the wall, down the track, and now his race is probably ruined, thanks to uh, Fitzy's, uh, I don't know what, what the correct word is, uh, not smart move, let's just say that. Yeah, definitely not a smart move from Fitzy, and uh, I guess for him, he gained some spots, but unfortunately, torn up some uh, race cars in the process, and with that, we'll have a late race restart. These guys should be able to make it from here on out. With Josh Wimson as the race leader, let's go ahead and get back to the restart here for the McDonald's 400. Welcome back to Chicago Link Speedway. It's been a while when here tonight. And it's been a good one, and it's been a wild one. This is the 17 of Logan Williams. He has an issue now on the apron in, in the number 17. It's got to be a cut tire or something. That's yep. very big. 
I don't know if he went over some debris, but Logan Williams, who along with Joe Lukowski was one of the dominant drivers in the chase consistent uh, during the regular season with consistency, had a eh one at Indy, and now he was just running inside the top 15, and he's going to have a pop tire on the restart. Oh my goodness. Josh Williams is going to be the race leader with Jordan Edwards in second, Juan Garcia in third, Beal in fourth, Reem in fifth, Bright in sixth, Justin Zidell, Juan Duani, Alexander Vitale, and Trepa will round out the top ten. And do we have any drivers out? We do not. We still have all 36 drivers remaining. Um, after the second caution of the night with Kyle Sustry. And we will go back green with, I believe, 22 laps to go here in this one. And under the 54 oh! blew up as well. He was involved in the first caution. Uh, wow. Big developments on the restart. But meanwhile, the, the pack takes the green flag. And we remember the the restart and the laps preceding it. Green flag is out, but the last restart, it was so chaotic that we couldn't keep up with anything. Is it going to be the same thing for here? For now, Williamson leads down the back stretch with Beal. A big jump, a big boost in position. He's going to go all the way to the lead. To the inside he comes, and here comes Bradley Ream, last race winner. He's going to make it three wide down the, down the inside, three by behind him, and it's a ton of battling, jockeying for positions, and it is now Brandon Beal taking advantage to the inside, and he is there, and he is probably going to clear Williamson off of the backstretch. Big battles going on behind him, but... Oh, they're hey, left no, in, the, in the back. Joe Lukowski, the 20th Scarlet Taylor. Oh my goodness, and they're almost welcome to the line between the 2 and the 31, and this is starting to look like the actual NASCAR Cup Series. Last time at Nashville, in real life, as of this recording, and then the late race restart once again. And that was supposed to be the last restart, Nathan. Oh man. We have to see how much damage that Rakowski has, because he, he clipped the 20 of Skylar Taylor, I believe. See, not that bad. Not as bad as I thought. I did see... I think he hit the outside wall a little bit, but there's not enough damage to really see. It's been an off night for Rakowski, surprisingly, here tonight in that number 43. And he was involved in that one with a little bit of damage, but must not be enough to really notice, but... Tough boy for the 20 of Scarlett Taylor, not going to come down pit road. And that's our third caution of the night here at Chicago Land Speedway. And uh, let's go ahead and see what happened for the third caution of the night. And it's wild ways here at, at Chicago Land for the, the, the McDonald's 400. Well, here we go. Second, uh, third caution of the night, I should say. And second one caused by Fitzwater, unfortunately. And it's another... Color that is yellow that he turns. And it's the number 20 of Skylar Taylor. Right in front of Joe Wachowski. He makes contact with Andy Miller. But what a save from Joe Wachowski though. He's going to get out with minimal damage. But unfortunately that, that cannot be said for Sam, uh, for Skylar Taylor. And the number 48 of si uh, of Sainty Messi. I should say. And uh, It's been a long night here tonight at Chicago Land. Um, as of this week when we... we with both races, so I'm losing speech. Um, but what a work right there. Tough play for Fitzy. Um, causing two uh, crashes in one night. And tough play for Skylar Taylor here tonight. I might need to put this on a t shirt, but Zachary Fitzwater Sr. strikes again. Gonna turn Skylar Taylor right in front of the pack. And talking about a great save by Rakowski, great save by the 16 of Andrew Miller avoids it from going head on into the inside wall but other than that Fitzy claims another handful of cars and another caution is out same story same same beginning and it will be the same result yeah tough boy for Fitzy and I don't think too many people are going to be happy with Fitzy to be fair he's not a good season here on the cup side made the truck chase but struggled to see it in the cup series and uh unfortunately he took out another one, a great save, like you said, for Andrew Miller and Joe Lukowski. 
Bukowski, he's going to get out with minimal damage. So he's going to be able to keep on going and try to get out of this middle of the pack mess. But it's, uh, that's going to cause another restart. And Beagle, he survived one and he took it uh, to the front. Can he survive another one? Let's find out here at Chicago Land Speedway. Welcome back to Chicago Land Speedway. We will go back when we have 16, 15 or 16 laps to go here in the McDonald's 400. It's been a wild one here tonight at Chicago Land, and we've had a couple of wild restarts, and we will have at least one more here in this one after the third caution of the night with Scott Taylor and Joe Wachowski. Wachowski doesn't have too much damage, uh, Scott Taylor does have quite a bit of damage in the number 20. Is Brian Beal on the, the uh, top spot with Josh Williams in second? Weem, Blight, Zydell, Abel last night's truck winner, and Amon Garcia, Jordan Edwards, Alexander Vitale, and Ryan Dwyer rounds out the top 10. And in the back, you see the number 20 with some uh, damage, and Local Williams is a one lap down um, with his tire going down, and then Joe Wachowski is in the back here as well. The 54 is out with a piston. That's what happened at, um, on the last restart for the 54. He blew a piston for the number 54. And we will go back and we have 16 laps to go for yet another restart, Ponson. He has two wins. He's looking for five. Is he going to get win number three here at Chicagoland? Green flag is in the air. Beal gets a great jump on Williamson and Ream behind. He's going to fall in line right ahead of Eli Bright. But Zydell jumps to the inside. We haven't seen him in the top five all race long. Here comes Aaron Abel to the inside with him. San Vitali, here comes Bradley Ream taking a look to the inside of Williamson and just like that, Brandon Beal has cleared this pack. Bradley Ream to the inside. Is he trying to go back-to-back -back here in the JBL Cup Series? I guess we'll see in about a little over 10 laps time. But Ream to second. Is Zydell going to have anything to say about that? Yes, he is. He says, I'm going to go three wide in a turn one. Ballsy it is. But he's going to put Ream three wide in the middle. <laughs> and he's going to go for broke, Zydell is. Behind him is Aaron Abel pushing him to the inside, and look at that, Bradley Re or Bradley Ream to the outside. He's gonna try and make it stick the 77 into the wall, scrapes it just barely, and the 22 clears. Bradley Ream to P2, oh. and he is gonna chase down. Oh my goodness, three wide all over the place. Aaron Abel pushing up against the 12 there, but the 22 clears with a big oh. head of steam. Oh, the play ball is gonna go round. Eric Monaco spins the 23 and Matthew Huber goes around and the 24 up into the air for a split second. 16 involved. Oh, and they keep piling in. The 17 of Williams is in it. Logan Williams is in it. Oh, the 20 comes sliding in. Barely Ooh. misses it. Santi Messi gets into the 16 there of Andrew Miller. Caution once again, Nathan. And yes, this is very much looking like Nashville. <laughs> oh, my God. Goodness, you know, the lights have came on, it is dark, we cannot see a single thing in between turn three <laughs> now. Um, the lights have came on, these guys are getting cr crazy here at Chicago Land Speedway. And we got another restart, Anthony Hernandez is destroyed, Andrews is destroyed, Andrew Miller, Trey Bardo, Eric Monaco. I saw Matthew Hubert, Logan Williams, Messi... Dylan Matthews, Ace Garcia, a lot of drives involved. Jordan Stell, and a lot of chases involved as well. That was carnage. I. That, that was big. That, I, I don't think we could say the big one because the race isn't over and it's Chicagoland. But, man, what a restart for Brandon Beal. He cleared the pack, and if it wasn't for that caution, he was probably only going to have to worry about Zydell and Bradley Ream there. But, great jump. But. Coming to the restart, if no issues happen to the four car and the four team, can he repeat that jump that he just did one restart prior and secure this win with under 10 laps to go? I guess we'll see when they come back around for the green flag. Not this lap, but in a handful of laps. If he does uh, that once again, he could easily uh, be in clean sailing to the win. Well, let's go and see about the the fourth caution of the night here at Chicago Land Speedway. 
It's still out calm, but the second half has been wild. Let's see what about caution number four. I don't know why these drivers are wrecking chase drivers here tonight, but this is the third one if you count Wachowski doing a save. Eric Marco turns Trey Barlow off of turn number two. And this one goes on for the entire length of the bat switch. They save it once, and Marco turns Bottle a second time, just to make sure, and then he just taps him a third time, while he gets re-ended from Matthew Hubert from behind. I don't know if there was some kind of beef uh, before that between Marco and Bottle. A great record of ones from Joe Wachowski right there, and then nowhere to go for the number three. 21, the 24 off the ground, Aaron Miller off the ground, Ace Garcia, Dylan Matthews, Logan Williams with a T-bone. The trap became blocked at this point, essentially, here. And a lot of drivers that needed good nights tonight in the chase didn't. And then late, here comes John Anderson, number 34, into the back of the three. And in total, three chase drivers involved in, in this one, Ace Garcia, Trey Bardo, and Logan Williams. Uh, this always happens. L last year when we got to chase, it got wild, and so far, this is going to be two for two for season five of wild chase races. The big one brings out the fourth caution of the night, as Scott Taylor almost got involved in that one, but uh, fourth caution of the night. Let's get back to the restart after we look at this one one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes they say silence is just the best medicine to see what's going on in the world, and let's just see, let's hear by just what happens in this crash. Just what a mess. Carnage, carnage, oh, and more carnage, goodness. And wait for it, here comes the 48, that's the 20, Skylar Taylor makes it through, here comes the 48, Santee Messi, bang. More carnage, and that's the end of the carnage, but... I feel like Silence did the best job to describe that pretty insane crash. Monaco turns a chaser, which inevitably turns into more chasers, and before we know it, we have the big one. Down the backstretch here at Chicagoland, just, well, what a mess. Yeah, very unfortunate. We've not really seen to make races like this this season, but, uh, tough play for all those drivers involved, but especially for drivers like Local Williams, uh, Trey Bardo, and welcome back to Chicagoland, our fourth caution of the night, and it has turned to uh, night, and has turned into a chaotic race here at Chicagoland for race two of the chase. It, it, uh, it will be Brian Beal, Justin Zydell, Bradley Weem, Eli Boy, and Abel, last night's truck winner, and running out of the top five, and then Sam Vitale, Ryan Dewani, Josh Ramson, one uh, Juan Garcia and the 31 of Jordan Edwards, the top 10. We have six retirees from the, the I guess, big one up the ways up to this point. Dylan Matthews, Andrew Miller, Eric Marco, Anthony Hernandez, John Andrews, and the big one that is out, Trey Bow in the number 41 third in the point stands in tonight. And at the line, we're going to try this once again. And Beal hang on for nine laps here at Chicagoland. Can we hang on and stay green for nine more laps? We have to wait and see. I, I it might be a full moon, Nathan, with how these guys are racing here, coming to the end of this race. Guys, we only have nine more laps. Can we do it? I guess we'll see. Beal gets the jump, green flag in the air, and he caught Zydell sleeping there, able to the outside, trying to make a move. That is Eli Bright trying to make something happen with help from San Vitali trying to jump the 22. He jumps the 22. He's trying to go for the position that that's P3, I believe. P2. He's trying to go for P2. Eli Bright is with help from San Vitali. Is San Vitali going to leave him in the dust? I guess we'll see. Going into turn three is all over the back bumper there. He's going to try and slide oh, him up as he can. But meanwhile, Beal clears much like he did last restart, and he did just do that. He perfected the last restart, and now he just has to hang on for eight more laps. Beal trying to get win number three. At the start of the season, he won five. He got two in the regular season, trying to get win number three here tonight. And if he does, that would tie him with Joe Lukowski with the most in the series with three. But here comes Justin Zydell, who was trying to get his first win all the season. I'm pretty sure here in the Cup Series, Andrews got... Uh, one at Atlanta, another mile and a half, and trying to chase down Beal. 
We got two Penske drivers trying to go side to side with Blight, but that's not going to really work out. How about Ian Abel? Last year he had a terrible one in the truck race at Chicagoland, and he might get a pair of top tens at minimum, maybe a pair of top fives with, between winning the cup race, uh, winning the truck race, and getting a good one here tonight. Remsen still having a good one in the 77. Ronnie Duani still doing good. How about Dan Campbell? And that's all the chaos. He's inside the top 10 now. Matthew Burnett, we've not talk, talked about this guy all night long. Last night he blew up in the truck race and he's just outside the top 10 trying to take 10th away from Dan Campbell. Crampton's falling back, but he's back up front. Oh, Ruiz about turns uh, John Edwards right there. And then back here is Clifton and, uh, Zach, uh, uh, Joe Kowski and Clifton just outside of the top 15 in 19th and 20th. Now, while that happened, Seidel took the lead away from Brandon Beal. They're side by side, actually going into turn one, turn two, and onto the back stretch. Before, up on the outside, the 38 onto the inside, the preferred lane. Maybe? I guess we'll see. Beal tries to work that outside, but now, don't look now, because here comes Sam Vitale, the only Penske chaser that is in the playoffs postseason. He's going to try and make something happen. He's going to try and look to the outside. Nothing working. He's going to jump to the inside. Oh, very, boy. very nice move. And he's going to send it in deep there on the inside. And Beal's going to wash up shore, up the track. Abel, he's going to try and find a way into this battle. But it's all, it's Justin Zydell now. He is not in the postseason, and he might be the one who wins once again, being another uh, non-chaser to win this playoffs, this uh, <laughs> offseason, rather. Big moves being made. Beal back out in front of Sam Vitale. Here comes Williamson to the inside of Aaron Abel. Big moves being made early on, and we and Nathan, we have three laps to go this time around, and two laps to go coming back to the line. Two laps to go. Beal in second. Sam Vitale in third. Can a non-chaser go back to back here to kick off the season five chase? Wachowski is uh, not what Wachowski. Yeah, Sam Vitale to the inside of William Beal chases the second, third, and fourth with another one just outside the top five. Two laps to go. Out Sam Vitale cleared the four. Does he have a shot at Justin Zaitel? He might have it. Here we go. Coming to the white flag this time by it's gonna come down to Zydell and Sam Vitale. White flag is out for Justin Zydell. Uh, but we saw the story in the truck race last night. White flag is out one more time around. Beal's gonna jump to the inside of Sam Vitale, and it is all over if Beal gets to the inside of the 12, but he holds his line for now. They're gonna wash up shore, but we saw this very uh -oh. instant slap cars ahead. Is this gonna play a factor into the race? We have one laps to go. Last time going into turn three. Are they gonna play a factor? The 12 up track. The 12 and the four no Not longer quite. factor, and it's all Justin Zydell. Justin Zydell is going to win for front almost Wilson Penny Watson. And what a crazy way to see that Chicago land. John Anders won all the way back at Atlanta in the John Deere 400. And now Justin Zydell is going to get the win here tonight. Ford is going to go two in a row. And non chasers are going to go two in a row. Sam Vitale in second field and third. Well, I guess if it wasn't Crampton, uh, the, the, the non-chaser that I chose, I guess it was going to be Zydell. Zydell holds off Sam Vitale, holds off and gets past Brandon Beal, the hard charger, trying to go for five wins, his third tonight. Great performance by all those drivers, but the, the winner, of course, there can only be one winner, and that winner is Justin Zydell. He kind of showed up for the truck race, not going to lie, but... This race, he definitely proved himself, and he shows speed. He definitely has speed. He showed speed. Uh, I believe it was at Pocono. He mm -hmm. showed, like, a lot of speed. He ran up front, just couldn't get it done. Tonight, consider that redemption. Justin Zydell is your winner here at Chicago. Fantastic one from Justin Zydell. Second win for front wall one. Uh, Justin Zydell wins here tonight. John Anders won at Atlanta, and John Anders won the All Star race. So e even though they weren't able to get um, either the third or, or the third in the chase, still it's been a very successful season for Benny Watson and the Sport Motorsports team. Alexander Vitale almost two wins in a row for the team Bronson and Team Penske. Uh, Sam Vitale gets second. That's great news for him.
based off of all the chases and up ahead of him having bad ones. He could be the point leader leaving tonight, potentially. Beal in third, Williamson in fourth, Abel in fifth. He gets a double top five this weekend here at Chicago Land. Eli Blight, that is someone that needed a good one. Into minus 37, and he's definitely going to gain a good amount of ground here tonight. And then Burnett in eighth, I don't know where. Crampton in ninth, and Dwight in tenth. Juan Garcia, Hamill, Edwards, Cunnington, Wachowski still gets the top 15 out of nowhere um, from the number 43. Uh, BB Ruiz in 16th, Walker, Miles, Clifton, Fitzy, the top 20. Hey, great one for Fitzy. He's had a struggling season for that record racing team. And right behind him is his teammate in 21st. Looking Williams in 22nd. And looking through the rest of the results. 28 cars finish on the lead lap. Farmington one lap down, and then Matthews on down, all either crashed or blew up here in this absolutely wild race here at Chicago. And what's the final thoughts for nothing like the truck race in a chaotic race here for the McDonald's wanted? Oh my gosh, the the truck race just cannot eclipse what we saw here at the cup race, the McDonald's 400. We saw everything, Nathan. We saw great battles, great side-by-side. -side. We saw pit road. We saw... Cautions after pit road, cautions during the pit cycle. That proved a, a big a point and a big event, I guess you could say, lack of better words, uh, into how this race unfolded. It was cramped and out. And it was, he, won, he was top 15, but he definitely dropped outside of the top 20. I pick, of course, Travis Crampton did not really have a good pit stop, but Rakowski as well. He kind of rallied back to a 15th place, but he was back there as well. That's why he got caught up in, what, two crashes? So, great race. Of course, as always, Nathan, Chicagoland never disappoints, and I'm glad that it's in the playoffs and the chase. Mm, yeah, Chicagoland does not disappoint. The first half was wild, uh, but good racing in the second half was wild for a totally different reason. And here is the points and how they shake up, leaving a wild... Wild Chicago land. Out St. Vitale is now the, the new point leader as I thought, but, but, only two points over William Beal in second. Josh Williamson in third minus seven. Joe Wachowski in fourth minus ten. Burnett in fifth minus eleven. No Clifton in sixth minus twelve. Logan Williams in seventh minus twenty-five. Derek Hamill in eighth minus twenty-eight. Trey Bell in ninth also minus twenty-eight. Ace Garcia in 10th minus 32, N uh, Nick Lopez in 11th minus 35, and it's kind of weird. I thought he would have made up more ground than this, but ultimately Eli Blake still stays in 12th. He was minus 37, <laughs> he's now minus 36. Even though he got P6 tonight. That's kind of weird, but as you can tell, it really shook up things here. Only the top 6 now are separated by 12 points, and then 7th on 12th. Mass, we had bad nights here tonight, and it's really gonna shake things up going into Gateway for the first time ever on the channel. And that's gonna be Cup and Twats next week. Oh man, what a race here at Chicagoland. Based off what we saw tonight, especially for some of those chases, what do you think we will see next week at Gateway? Next week at Gateway, I think that we. I don't know, my truck series thoughts on going into Gateway may vary, but. I think in my opinion going in a cup, I think we're going to see a very competitive race, especially after seeing what we saw tonight, all of the chaos and action. There's no reason why it can't carry on in a gateway. Sure, it might be a new track. Sure, it might be a little bit narrow, narrower than what Chicagoland already is, but there's no reason why it can't be an entertaining race. So that's why I think that it's going to be one that shakes things even further. That's, that's my prediction, Nathan. I think that it's going to shake things up even further than what Chicago Land did. Very valid point. I, bold, predi bold prediction, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a very bold prediction, but I'm not too surprised, because uh, last year when we got to the chase, things got wild. So far, two races into the, the season 5 chase, and it's gone wild once again. So, well, that was an interesting one. Um, has some full cautions, all well, three of them in the second half. Um, had a little bit of a mic issue, had a little bit of a lag issue. All over the place, but I hope you guys enjoy it with a fantastic a finish. Everything. 
a, a little bit of everything. Just, just a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, but uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. As we got Gateway, I'm very excited for Gateway. First time that we've tried that, and uh, absolutely love how that one shakes out. So, uh, until next week, for both Trots and Cup at Gateway, uh, we will see you guys over there in Missouri next week. Bye! Bye-bye. <laughs>